Stan Jabalisco here for the continuation of our video tutorial sequence for the book Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics 3rd Edition published by McGraw-Hill in October of 2013. I recommend the paper Spiral Bound Edition. You will find a link to that book from the description in this video. A link that goes directly to that book so you can buy it if you don't have it now and I recommend that you do refer to this book as you're watching this video. It will help a lot. What we're looking at here is figure 6-6 six six on page 123. By the way, uh, you can go to my website sciencewriter.net click the link videos it'll take you to my YouTube channel from there, go to the playlist, Beginners, Schematics, for a full roster of all the videos I've done uh, th that uh, help to tutor you in regards to various aspects of this book. We're looking at figure 6-6 six on page 123. It shows, as you can see, a battery with a voltage E and four resistors in series connected across the battery. The voltages across those resistors are E sub 1, E sub 2, E sub 3, and E sub 4. Now notice that the polarities of the voltages across the resistors are reversed from the polarity of the battery. That is to say, the negative polarity of the voltage on each resistor is the side that's closer to the negative pole of the battery. So if we add up all of these voltages, E1, E2, E3, and E4, and we do not take polarity into account, we don't worry about the polarity, we're going to get the same voltage as the battery, the voltage E, the same voltage as the battery. And that is a principle known as Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law or Kirchhoff's law for voltage uh, it simply says that if you add up the voltages of all the resistances in a closed circuit like this uh, you're, if you add up the voltages across them all you're going to get the same voltage as the battery. Another way of saying that is if you do take polarity into account that is if you start at a particular point in this circuit, any point, let's say right there Let's say you start at this point right here. And you go around in either direction and measure the voltages across every component, including the battery, and you do take polarity into account. You're always going to get zero. And a, a simplistic way of looking at that is, well, of course you're going to get zero. Because the voltage between any point in itself can't be anything other than zero. But there's more going on than just a single isolated point in space here. There's other stuff happening. But if you go around any loop in a circuit like this and come back to the same point, and then you add up the voltages in a DC circuit across all the elements, all the components in that loop, you're always going to get zero. And that is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now in this book, uh, I explain how you can follow the flow of currents and measure the voltages in practical circuits uh, of this sort. What you can do here is you can take the breadboard that I've described in uh, this chapter and also in my book Electricity Experiments you can do at home. You can take the breadboard with all of its alphanumeric designators on the contacts of the board, the nails that you pound in. You literally pound nails into that board. And you mount these resistors according to this layout diagram. Here's the, the nails uh, as they appear on the board. Uh, the letters and numbers represent where they are. Uh, G1, H1, and so on and so on. And you, and you wrap the leads of the resistors around there. And I used uh, resistors rated at 220 ohms, 330 ohms, 
470 ohms and 680 ohms and then here's a jumper to the negative battery terminal and a jumper to the positive battery terminal well I wired that up and then I measured the voltages across each of these resistors but before I did that I actually measured the component values themselves because and that included not only the um, not only the uh, resistors but also the the battery voltage and I got 6.30 volts a good strong lantern battery fresh off the shelf 6.30 volts the resistors worked out to be 220 328 465 and 671 ohms all within their rated tolerances but certainly not exact values and then I connected the voltmeter across and it, it's this is easier to do than the experiment for Kirchhoff's current law because you don't have to break the circuit apart anywhere you can just <clears throat> have the four resistors connected right across the battery measure the resist uh, the voltage across each one of them and add them up and then that should all add up to 6.30 volts and in fact when I did that experiment not surprisingly that is the result that I got. In fact, what I got when I added these up was 6.31 volts. Now that is what you might call experimental error. It results partly from errors in reading the meter, partly from errors in the meter itself, and partly from just Murphy getting in there and insisting that this is not an exact world. Murphy. Do you know Murphy's Law? Murphy's Law. Or Edsel Murphy's Laws. There was an article once in one of the ham radio magazines called Edsel Murphy's Law or Edsel Murphy's Laws. <laughs> it was a QST magazine for radio amateurs a long time ago back in the 60s or 70s. And it had a whole, <clears throat> it was like a, a roster of Edsel Murphy's Laws and one of them was if if something can go wrong it will and the corollary to that which I like to call Jibalisco's corollary uh, I, I stole that and put my name on it if something cannot go wrong it will <laughs> Stan Jibalisco signing off from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Once again, here's the book, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, 3rd Edition. I recommend you get the Spiral Bound Paper Edition. Don't get the electronic version and use it in your workshop because, and besides, the electronic version uh, has you know uh, some of these electronic books I have done another video about them they they're not always quite accurate there's some problems with the conversion software again Murphy's law but with paper Murphy doesn't like paper so much he likes it but not as much he likes bits and bytes a whole lot more than he likes wood pulp Stan Jibalisco signing off until next time so long.